Good evening, Pio Nation. Hope you're having a great Thursday. My name is Matt Williamson, and you are watching Marietta College Esports. So tonight, we have the Pioneers going up against Ohio Northern University in League of Legends. Uh, this is going to be a pretty interesting match. Uh, Ohio Northern is a, is a very, very good League of Legends team, so we're going to see how our Pioneers do uh, against them. We are just moments away from the match starting. I'm already in the, the lobby. We're just waiting for one more person to join and should be logging any minute now. So we will get the roster information and all that to you uh, in just a little bit. In fact, I'm going to get the audio set up just in case they uh, go as soon as everyone's in here. So give me one second to make sure all that's taken care of. All right. Uh, so before we get things underway, you, you may be asking, Matt, what, what, are you, what are you wearing here? This doesn't look like your normal professor attire. Well... I am pleased to announce that earlier today, our official Married to College Esports jerseys have arrived. Our players are super stoked about it. Uh, if you were following on social media, you would have already gotten the notification that uh, they got them. They look great. Our players love them. So we do want to thank our friends over at BSN and Sport Tech uh, for making this happen. Couldn't have done it with, uh, without them. Uh, so looks like everyone's the lobby. I'm going to go ahead and give you the roster information for our League of Legends team. Since we're going to be starting champ select any minute now. In the top lane, we have MC Cressman, uh, uh, Scott Cressman. Jungler will be MC Knox, Lucas Danford. Uh, mid lane is MC Brimstone, Ian Darling. AD Carry, MC Larson, Brandon Larson. Support will be MC Cowboy, David Stratton. And our sub is MC Moon, uh, Kevin Jong. And then we have our coach, uh, Drake Newsom. Uh, now, Larson's not able to make it to uh, this game because right now our men's basketball is in the uh, the OAC tournament, so he had to help with that. So MC Moon will be playing the mid lane, and MC Brimstone will be uh, playing the uh, ADC. It looks like both sides are ready, so we may be getting into champ select very soon. Uh, looks like uh, Highland Northern is going to be on the blue side, and Marietta will be on the red side for game one. And we are already underway with... Uh, champ select. So let's see what kind of bands and picks are going to be uh, showing up uh, for this uh, match. So Owen, you will get the first ban, and looks like you're going to ban out the Yumi. Uh, a pretty annoying support laner to go up against. So they're just saying, no, we're not going to have any of that. Marietta takes out the Nautilus. Another support. So looks like so far there's been some targeting in the support lane, or the, I guess the support. Uh, player I must not and another support ban being at the leona are we going to see like an all-out just deplenishing everyone's support pools yeah there goes the blitzcrank they're just going after supports this is very interesting i don't know if i've seen this happen before Seriously? and they're okay Seriously? now let's just see if they do like a thrash are they, are they gonna ban thrash Oh no, Santa. Well, Santa's one of those that is also really good at ADC, so... Yeah, good pick. This is so interesting that five supports are banned. So, is this is really limits to, uh, your selection to, like, Morgana and Thresh, and Morgana obviously is going to have the advantage there. So we'll see if Ohio Northern decides to go with that first, or maybe they probably pick something else, because a lot of other champions are on the board by just completely banning out supports. So we see Ohio Northern prioritizing Kled in the top lane, and Crestman's going to go with an Ornn uh, to counter that. So now we'll see uh, what Marietta decides to go for their next pick. So I mean, maybe they'll try to take whatever's left of the supports. Maybe they'll take Jungler. I don't know. I, I don't know what they're talking about right now. I'm just kind of here at the, the broadcasting room. And it looks like they're going to go with the Sejuani for uh, Jungly. Uh, Nox does like uh, Sejuani. And we see Ohio Northern going to go with the Trundle next. So now we'll see what they, uh, I don't know, this has to go with their next pick. Once again, I have no predictions at all here. I'm still kind of like recovering from the fact that we had five, five and a half support bands. And there is the Braum, so they will go ahead and take that and try to limit Cowboys champion pool uh, again. And it looks like Marion is going to go straight with Syndra, uh, blind picking that. Interesting uh, choice there. 
and we may right. see and we see the Kalen being banned out. Let's see if High Northern continues their uh, strategy with banning out support champions. Because who's left? Like Thrash and Morgana, and then after that you have like maybe Alistar, um, and then you get into some really interesting picks. And there goes the Thresh. So they're going to continue their strategy of trying to uh, limit Cowboy's uh, pool. And the Vigar is going to get banned by Marietta. They do not want to have that to go up against Syndra. Yeah, it seems like their whole strategy is revolves around trying to ban out Cowboy. Uh, however, be because Marietta is in Seelol, they do have League Unlocked. So it's not like Cowboy doesn't have any champions left. But let's see what they go with their last ban here. And they're actually going to go with Aphelios uh, this time. So it's not completely targeting Cowboy, but most of the bans were targeting Cowboy. And it looks like... Oh, are we going to get Pike? Cowboy does like Pike. So I'm actually surprised they decided not to, to ban that from him. So now we're going to see what... Uh, I don't know what it goes with next. They are hovering the Yasuo. I've seen bot lane Yasuo. I've seen mid lane Yasuo. So they could go either way. And now they're actually highlighting over the Ezreal. And they do lock that in. So now they're going to try to uh, pick a, uh, a champion to go against Syndra. And Syndra's one of those where overall is a pretty good champion. But they're highlighting Echo. And they may lock it in to counter Syndra. Uh, no, they're going to go with Malzahar. Well, they haven't locked it in just yet. No, now they're highlighting Orianna. I was going to say, Malzahar probably would have been a good pick because there aren't too many uh, mid-champions that counter, but Orianna is a very safe pick. Uh, if she's able to get uh, her ults in, that could be uh, quite something. It looks like Marina's going to go with Misfortune for ADC. So overall, looks like a pretty good comp. Uh, I think Marietta got a lot of champions that they're very comfortable with. I know Pressman's very comfortable with Orn. Nox loves Sejuani. Moon does like Syndra a lot. Um, Cowboy likes Pike. And I think Brimstone is pretty comfortable with Misfortune. So I think overall that is a pretty good draft. Uh, so we'll have to see what, or at least how they do in the uh, the game itself. So everyone's still choosing their, their loadouts. Uh, so we're just going to have to wait a little bit for the uh, game to, to start up because the the good old spectator delay. So while we are waiting, because we do have about three minutes before we get into the game, let's talk a little bit about what's going on with the, uh, the eSports program and some of the things that are going to be coming up very soon. So tonight, not only do we have our League of Legends match that you're watching right now, but our PUBG will be playing in the next round of Collegiate PUBG tonight. That will be at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, but we will not be able to broadcast it because I don't have a good way of doing that just yet. But I believe it'll be broadcasted in on Collegiate PUBG's channel. So you can check that out and go to twitch.tv slash Collegiate PUBG. What I would recommend is just open up a second browser and so you'd have your Twitch channel for this Twitch channel up on one browser, and you can have Collegiate PUBG up on the second browser in about an hour. That way you can watch both of our teams playing at the same time. So we have that tonight. Tomorrow, our Rainbow Six team will be going up against uh, Texas. The Texas. As in University of Texas, Austin, Texas. Uh, so that will be 8 8.30, sorry, 8.30 Eastern Time. So please be sure to uh, come for that. That's going to be a very exciting match. Uh, our Rainbow Six team did win against Purdue last week. So we'll see how they fare against University of Texas Austin. And then Saturday, uh, our Rocket League team will start up again playing against Northwood University at 9 a.m. So please be sure to, to come for that. Uh, and then our League of Legends team will be playing uh, in the, the next round of, of Seelaw. I believe... This, front, this Saturday is actually the last match of the regular season for Seelaw. Uh, so that'll be at 4 o'clock Eastern time. So please be sure to, to come back for that as well. 
And then Sunday, we have uh, several games up against Lords University. So our Overwatch team will be playing against Lords at 3 o'clock Eastern Time, followed by our League of Legends team around 4 o'clock Eastern Time. And then our Overwatch team will have one more match later that evening, but uh, under TESPA rules, we probably won't be able to broadcast that just because of the, the fact that... Uh, I'm losing my train of thought. Overwatch League will be uh, playing at the same time, so we won't be able to broadcast that. Uh, some other things that's going on with uh, Married College Esports. I announced this uh, the other day and I'll announce it again. We do have our uh, merchandise store up, courtesy of BSN Sports. So if you've been looking to get some uh, Marietta Esports swag, whether it's shirts, long sleeve or short sleeves, pants, backpacks, hoodies, we have that available at our store. You can go to bit.ly slash mcbsn, uh, all in capital letters. A portion of each sale will go directly to our esports program. And considering that most of the stuff are Nike products, uh, the prices are very reasonable. But you do need to get your orders in. This is only up for a limited time, and you have until Monday, March 9th to place your orders. After that, it will no longer be available. All orders will be shipped after uh, March 9th. So... What happens is we collect all the orders, and then after that, everything will be shipped out. So hopefully you would get your products by, I'd say, a week or two later. I'm not too exactly sure how long it takes for shipping, but please be sure to go check that out. Uh, this is a great fundraising opportunity for our eSports team, so every little bit uh, will help. Uh, so we do have that coming up, and uh, the game is currently being loaded, so as soon as I get the uh, game completely loaded into the UI setup, we will get to uh, our game here. So right now I'm just waiting for the loading screen to finish here so I can get the, the UI up and running. Still waiting for the load. All right, so let me get a couple of things here set up. All right, here we go. Game one of Marietta College versus Ohio Northern University. Ohio Northern is going to be on the blue side. Marietta will be on the red side. So we'll see if there are any possible invades. And it looks like Ohio Northern is going to have a four-man group up in the top riverside. Maybe looking for a potential invade. And it looks like they will do that. They may try to chase down Syndra. Gets a little bit of poke. And they're not going to get too much other than a ward by uh, the Raptors. And we do see a little bit of exchanging going on, so uh, Pike is going to be able to get at least a, a ward down for Marietta. So if Iron Northern's going to get some vision, Marietta might as well do the same. So great job there to, to get that ward. Minions have spawned. So we are still seeing some pings going out. So I know this is just trying to figure out exactly where uh, Nox will be starting. And Marietta will be able to figure that figure out where uh, Snyder will be starting for Ohio Northern. Now it looks like we're gonna see pretty standard starts. Yeah, nothing too crazy within the, the first two minutes uh, of the game. So High Northern is predicting where Mary is at. Actually, it looks like they're going to try to do some counter jungling. So we see Trundle going straight for the wolves. And Nox is going to notice this. And pings are coming out, so... Uh, we may see a little bit of skirmish here going on in Marietta's jungle. And he's going to get the stun and it flashes and it actually misses. And first blood will go to Marietta. So Snyder got a little greedy trying to counter jungle and he does get punished for it. Now 
Now, as far as the other planes go, they're pretty much even in CS. Uh, Brimstone just slightly ahead, but not by much. It's only a two CS difference, so I wouldn't uh, really comment on that just yet. Now we're gonna see. I didn't think it was gonna be a gank attempt yet, but it looks like Marion is converging the bot lane, and they do spot out the trundle, and we may be seeing another uh, engage going on here. Or at least just try to poke him out a little bit. So Infernal Drake is going to be up in less than a minute. So we're seeing a possible gank at mid lane, but uh, Moon does go ahead and burn his flash to protect himself. Drake is going to be up. Marietta does have advantage with the vision. So we'll see if this side is trying to make a play around it. Crestman's doing holding very well in the top lane, keeping uh, Kled pretty low and ahead on CS by about 13. So right now Marietta's ahead by just about 1,200 gold. Still very early because a lot of that is that one uh, kill that Marietta was able to secure. But overall Marietta's doing pretty well from a CS perspective as well. We are seeing some pings going on the top lane. We may see a gank attempt onto Cressman. Trundle is just kind of waiting there. And we see the engage onto Kled. And Cressman is going to get uh, whittled down quite a bit. A flash gets burned. But Cressman's going to actually get away. So he burns his flash. He's going to keep going. So that gank attempt did not get much. I mean, he did exchange his flashes from the, the top lane, but Ohio Norton was not able to get the kill that they were looking for. And that's going to give Marietta a chance to go for Infernal Drake because they know that Trundle is up there. And Marietta does secure uh, the first dragon. And we see Oriana coming in. They may be looking for a possible fight. In fact, Trundle is going to start closing in onto uh, Syndra, and Oriana will pop the ult. And meanwhile, Hollow Northern is going straight for the rest of the Pioneers. Nox is getting very low, and he's going to go down, so it's two, three kills uh, for Ohio Northern, and they're going to go and just steal the, the blue buff while they're there. So Marina was able to secure the dragon, but they were not prepared for... Uh, a jump by a high northern and that pretty much is going to even up the uh, the game now actually that's going to put a high northern ahead by just a couple hundred gold actually Ezreal burns the all to get the mains half health, but does not connect with any of Marietta's uh, players.
And meanwhile, if we take a look at the uh, the vision control, Higher Northern has done a great job with uh, maintaining vision in both sides of the uh, the river. Maria does have a few wards up in the top river, but they don't have too much in the bottom river, so they're gonna have to work on uh, their vision control. We see Cowboy at least getting rid of some of the uh, the wards in the area. And when you see Crestman work on some vision control. So it might be looking at possible gank attempt in the, the top lane. Oh, never mind, Nox is gonna have to fall back. This is still a pretty even game. Oriana will pop the ult to disengage uh, Syndra. So that's a, a good move. But will still hang around despite the fact that she's under half health. But So now we're going to see the gank attempt in the mid lane. Frondo's going to take a tower hit. And he's going to flash and get onto Moon. But he's going to fall as well. Meanwhile, we see the gank attempt in the, the top lane. And... Quick draw is going to have to burn his charge to, to get away from it. Now we're seeing the engage onto Braum. Is he's getting pretty low in health. This fortune will pop her ult, but it's now dangerously low. Braum will pop the ult, but it will end up falling to Sarek. So what was a one for one train in the mid lane now turns to a three for one among the uh, the lanes with Ezreal getting those two kills. And that's going to put them ahead by just a little over a thousand gold ten minutes into the game. Now we see Trundle looks like he's going to be starting up the Rift Herald. And with all the vision they have, I don't think Marion is going to be able to contest this. And they do secure the Rift Herald. Now we see the engage onto Sarek and Brimstone does get the shutdown on him. And Calibre will get the kill. And ult is used by Orianna and Moon will have to flash away. And now we see Marietta moving up towards the river and Mountain Drake is up and they should be able to secure this. Although Trundle is going to try to come down. Cowboy uses the ult, but it does not connect. But Marianna will pounce onto Trundle. And he actually does get a kill onto Nox. And Marianna's trying to chase him down. And they do get the kill on him. You can obviously see a trade going on in the, the top lane. But Marianna will disengage, so... Uh, so they were able to get the, uh, so Ohio Northern was able to stop Maria's attempt on the, the Drake uh, at the cost of Snyder's life. And we're still seeing some training going on here. It looks like Ohio Northern took uh, Maria's blue buff again and now they're going to start up the, the Mountain Drake. But with the wards they put down, they're going to know that Nox is heading straight for it, so they're going to disengage. So right now, in the mid lane, actually, I, uh, Spoopy is uh, starting to take a lead over Moon. And we may be seeing a, uh, a possible attempt here onto... And Sarek's having to kind of... 
flip away. Nox does get the kill onto Sarek. But he may fall here. Braum does pop his ult. Meanwhile, Brimstone's trying to get some damage. And Teleport comes out. A great ult by uh, Orianna. And does get the shutdown. Actually, two kills. Meanwhile, we do see Crestman engaging in. And Moon comes from behind. Cowboy does get the kill onto... Yeah, just kills left and right. Cowboy gets a double kill. And does miss onto Orianna. So right now it's a 4 for 2. And now it's going to be an ace for Ohio Northern. So I mean, that was just damage left and right. And the, the fact that Ohio Northern was very... Their Orianna and Clay were very low. But they're not able to finish it off. But despite that... Marianne is a head in goal? Interesting. Yeah, so Marion is still up by just shy of just a little under a thousand gold. But I think part of that has to do with maybe some of the shutdown gold that Marianna got, as well as the fact that there are some CS leads in the top uh, and bottom lanes. So we're seeing a lot of vision being placed around the uh, Mountain Drake. So we may be seeing our next team fight here. See, Mary is just trying to keep Vision under control. And meanwhile, we see Ezreal, Oriana, and uh, Trundle in the mid lane. They may be trying to go for uh, Moon. He's going to get a nice stun, but he's going to have to back away. They're going to look for a dive, and they're going to get him. Meanwhile, there was a race for the turrets, and Highland Northern does get the first turret gold. And they'll actually even start up the, the Mountain Drake as well, but Marianna may be looking to collapse. A nice all by Nox, and they pull out Trundle. So they're focused on trying to get him down, but Oriana catches two people with her ult and actually gets the shutdown. And Brimstone's going to try to get away, but Oriana will get the triple kill. And they do secure the Mountain Drake. They're going to have to play around that Oriana and not get hit by the ults. So with that, Ohio Northern does take the lead. So we are 16 minutes into the game, and Ohio Northern is ahead by uh, just a little over 2,000 gold. Which is not something that uh, you can't come back from, but Merida is going to have to play a bit smarter with positioning. They cannot allow two or three person Oriana ult, uh, especially the fact that Oriana is 803 and 20 CS ahead of Moon. And they were looking to try to catch Cowboy, but he will get away. And now they may be making a run for the Rift Herald. It is going to be up in five seconds. We do see Trundle and Ezreal uh, heading over there. Nox will get the piece of control ward down. And then Trundle will get rid of the ward. So will Marietta try to collapse on this? They have to respect the Oriana ult. It is up. And I don't think Marriott is going to be able to go in to, to try to take this. Instead, they may try to go for Clay, but he's getting a lot of damage onto Cowboy. And, the, and there's a good stun there, but although Oriana gets her ult and actually gets quite a few of Marietta, and two are down already for the Pioneers. So Marietta has to retreat. Meanwhile, the Ohio Northern continues to chase down Brimstone. And he is trying to poke some damage, but he's going to get slowed down by Trundle and ends up falling.
So Merida will try to at least get some vision back there. The overall the vision's not that bad, but some of the wards are starting to fade. So they're gonna have to try to get some vision back into their jungle. So otherwise, Highland Northern's gonna have a huge advantage. Uh, they are ahead by uh, about 1,400, no, not more than that, so I'm sorry. Uh, about 4,500 gold or so. So the, the lead is widening. Cloud Drake is going to be up in 50 seconds, so we do start seeing everyone kind of converging over there. Cloud Northern will be trying to clear some vision, and Merida may be looking for a potential collapse or a potential pick. But we are going to see Oriana back to buy, and Rabadon's get cap is uh, now available, so that Oriana just became even more scary. You can see Rift Herald is going to be summoned in the top lane, so Caressman's going to be forced to uh, contend that. And that's going to make it more difficult for him to, to help with any fights that go on in the bot lane. Or by the, uh, the Drake. And we are going to see a potential engage onto Trundle. And Cowboy actually has to burn his flash to get away. And High Northern will start up the dragon. Meanwhile, Crestman is going to have to work onto the, the Rift Herald. And How Northern does secure the Cloud Drake, and they're gonna go chase, chase the rest of the pioneers. The Brahmo actually catches three of them. Teleport comes out. And so will Kled. Preston will try to get his ult off and get a couple stuns. Meanwhile, How Northern is going straight for uh, Brimstone, and, do, and they do get him down, but Cowboy isn't gonna be able to get the double kill. So right now it is a two for one in favor of Marietta, but they are backing away. The Orion ult does catch Moon as well, so now it's a two for two. The all things considered, that, that kind of evened out. Uh, so Marietta is now only behind about about 3.5k gold so i will take that if you can close the, the gold gap and keep it even then they do have a fighting chance how northern is ahead on towers though marietta was only able to uh, get the bottom outer tower so they're gonna have to start making pushes in the other lane if they want to try to come back in this game We are seeing a bit of a skirmish going on in the top lane. We may be seeing an all team fight. So Moon's gonna get the, the stun off. Pressman's gonna charge in a little bit, but he's gonna get poked down already at half health. He's gonna try to use the turret uh, to help, but he ends up going down the Kled. You see the Oriana ult actually catches uh, Brimstone and gets a double kill on the Cowboy, so all that's left is Nox, so he's going to try to retreat. And they do get the uh, the Ace. So now they're going to go straight for Baron.
but that Ohio Northern does secure the Baron, and now they are up by over 7,000 gold. So with that ace, that does widen the, the gold lead. And then maybe looking to try to uh, finish this game very quickly. So we see Iron Northern doing their uh, split push in the mid and the, the bot lanes. So they'll just use the Baron Power and Minions to try to make progress towards Marietta's inhibitor towers while clearing vision along the way. So they're really kind of pinching Marietta. They, there's not a whole lot they can do. Pike does try to get the poke onto uh, Trundle, but he gets uh, served down quite a bit and is having to retreat. We do see Cowboy trying to get the jump and a nice alt onto one Conic. And Brimstone does get the kill onto Braum, but Braum does get the kill onto uh, Cowboy. Crestman does use his ult and Sarek does end up having to flash away to dodge it. Meanwhile, Hound Northern was able to secure the next Mountain Drake and Brimstone does end up falling in the process. So right now it is a two for one in favor of Ohio Northern and the rest of Marina is going to have to retreat. So Higher Northern might actually continue this push and try to finish up the game because they have secured the inhibitor. Although Pike is now back up, so they will fall back. So instead of finishing up, they're going to try to rotate around. Although Ezreal was able to get a kill onto Cowboy, so he's going to be sitting out again for another 30 seconds thinking about what he just did. So right now, Ohio Northern is ahead by about 9,000 gold over 27 minutes into the game. And right now they're just clearing jungle camps. Um, I think they're just looking for another objective to be able to take. Maybe they're waiting for Baron or maybe looking for one more team fight to finish the game. Since they do have control of the mid lane with the super minions, it does allow them to uh, push the other lanes. So right now they just have complete control over the game. Uh, Northern will continue to ping out. They have the top side jungle completely warded, so they know exactly where Nox is, they know where Brimstone is, and they may be looking for a potential engage onto Nox. Although Braum will get caught out. Now they're going to try to get the jump onto Pike, who's going to have to E away, but he's extremely low on health, and the Ezreal just whips on him. If that connected, he would have gone down. Nox tries to get the engage and is going to have to uh, use a stopwatch. So right now Mary is trying to get some damage on the Brawl and Pike will get the kill. But Orion's going to get the kill onto Pike so it's a one for one. 
and Crescent's about to go down. This may be it for game one, unless Marietta can put a stop. Grimstone will use the ult, but not a whole lot of damage is going to come out. Guardians Angels does get procced onto uh, Kled, and Orion has a huge ult to take down Moon, so all that's left is Nox, and that is going to be an ace. So they will take down the Nexus Towers. And all that's left is the Nexus. And with that, Game 1 will go to Ohio Northern University. Alright, so a lot of that was just, I mean, Ohio Northern played very well. They were able to execute the, the team fights. I think Marietta's comp was fine. Uh, it's just let them took, take the lead and they were able to uh, snowball it. And I think a lot of it was also positioning with the Oriana. Oriana had some really good ults there. So Marietta is going to either have to ban out the Oriana or if they go up against it again, they're going to have to play around that positioning because too many times that Oriana ult was a huge factor uh, in those fights. All right, so I think teams are talking things over, so I haven't gotten an invite for the lobby just yet. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and step away for just a minute. And once I get the, the lobby set up, uh, we'll be back. So uh, you're watching Marietta College Esports. Don't go away, we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, so that was a very short break because we're already in already in the lobby for uh, game two. So let me get the audio here set up because we may be getting into champ select very quickly. Uh, Marietta will be on the blue side this time. So we'll see what kind of adjustments uh, Marietta can make. Uh, both sides have already said they're ready, so we may be getting into champ select. So as soon as we... Make the switch. It should just be any second now. And here we go. Game two. These champs selected Marietta College versus Ohio uh, Northern University. And Marietta will still ban Nautilus. It'll be interesting if uh, Ohio Northern continues to focus uh, banning Cowboy. They're still going to ban the Yumi. We'll see if Marietta makes any adjustments in their other bands. I mean, Nautilus is still a good band, because uh, if you're not going to pick it, you don't want to play against it. They're still going to ban Blitzcrank, so they are focusing on the hook type uh, supports. Leona's still going to get banned. Fine. I don't need more enemies. And Marietta's going to keep this. They're not going to change any of their bands. Uh, and neither will Ohio Northern. And honestly, I'm okay with that. I can't really say there was any particular champion that should have been banned out from game one. Uh, and Marion is still going to go with the Orn. And looks like Ohio Northern may still go with the, the clan in the top lane. He had a, a, a really good uh, game. I think it was like at least 5-0 and 11 or something. I can't remember the exact number, so I apologize. I don't have that in front of me. 
but it makes sense for them to continue with the the Kled. Uh, we'll see if they decide to uh, take the Sejuani from Nox, or maybe they'll keep the Trundle. And actually, they're going to go straight for Aphelios for their uh, ADC. And it looks like Nox is going to go with the Olaf instead of Sejuani this time. And it looks like they're going to go for the Diana. Uh, Moon does like playing uh, Diana. So interesting that they're going to uh, blind pick the, uh, the mid laner. But I guess they really want to make sure that Moon can play that and doesn't get banned out in the next set of bans. And Hound Order will still go with the Braum. I think he had a pretty good impact with some of his alts and being able to protect Ezreal. So yeah, they're trying to do the same thing. And they're going to ban out Misfortune. They do not want Brimstone playing that. So they're going to try to ban out his pool uh, instead of Cowboy this time. Marinus still has to get to do the next ban. They're going to go ban the, the Kaiza. They do not want uh, High on Northern to be able to play that. So a lot of focus. Although that's actually interesting because High on Northern has already picked Aphelios. It looks like they're going to ban out the, the Syndra and High on Northern ban out the Pike. They don't want Cowboy on that. So once again, they're going to try to uh, limit his pools. I'm wondering if... Aphelios was going to be played like in a different lane, or maybe Kaiza could have been played differently. It's just very interesting that they decided to go with uh, Kaiza when Aphelios was already selected. I'm sure there's some reason. And Ohio Northern locks in Lee Sin. I know they were joking about it earlier, but they are going to go with it. And Brimstone's going to take the, the Jinx. So all that's left is support. So we'll see what... Oh, this is... It's interesting that Mary decided to go with support last. It's actually going to go with a Zyra. I haven't seen a Zyra support in a while. It looks like a High Northern may be going for that Malzahar in the mid lane, or at least they're hovering it, but now they're hovering over Victor. And they do lock in the, the Victor. So we're starting to get some champions we haven't seen in a while. We're getting Victor, Lee Sin, we're getting Zyra into the game. So interesting choice, I mean, with Victor's ult, it is going to make it a little bit trickier for Diana to, to go in. But we will see uh, how this goes. Now we just have to wait for the... Uh... Yeah, so we're just going to have to wait to see the, the, the loadout and then we're going to have to wait for uh, the spectator delay and then we'll be able to get to uh, the next game. But all right, so we're just going to have to wait uh, three minutes. Uh, so for those of you that have uh, recently joined the stream, you're watching Mary to College Esports. Pioneers are playing against Ohio Northern in game two. If Ohio Northern takes this, they will take the series. Otherwise, we will go to a game three. Uh, I mentioned earlier about the upcoming matches for this weekend. Actually, later tonight in about actually about 10 or so minutes, uh, our PUBG team will be participating in Collegiate PUBG. You can check that out at twitch.tv slash Collegiate PUBG. Uh, we do automatically host your channel as well. So whenever our broadcast ends tonight, if PUBG is still going on, you can watch it here. Um, just please be sure to check them out. They've done an exceptional job so far this uh, semester. They are 
uh, fifth overall, if I remember correctly. Uh, and they do want to make the top 16 so they can uh, advance to the playoffs. So definitely give them your support so you can check that out. Uh, tomorrow, our Rainbow Six team will be playing against uh, University of Texas. So that would be at 8.30 Eastern time. So please be sure to come back for that. Uh, and then this weekend, we have quite a few uh, games. Rocket League will play uh, Northwood uh, at 9 a.m. That's right, a.m., not p.m. Our League of Legends team will be playing their last Sea Law match at 4 p.m. Eastern time. And then Sunday, our Overwatch team will be playing against Lords. And then our, our League of Legends team will be playing against Lords University. So that'll be at 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock, respectively. And then finally, our uh, Overwatch team will be participating in the, the TESPA uh, Swiss round. So that'll be at 8 o'clock, although we probably won't be able to announce that. Uh, uh, not announce it, but be able to uh, broadcast that uh, due to the fact that Overwatch League is going on at the same time. And then we'll also remind you that we do have our team shop up, courtesy of BSN Sports. So if you're looking to get uh, some uh, shirts or hoodies or backpacks and so forth, this is your opportunity to do so. This is only going to be up for a limited time. So if you want to get uh, any of this, you have to do it within the next couple of weeks. Orders have to be placed by Monday, March 9th. So you still have a little over a week to go, but... Uh, time is running short, so you can go to bit.ly slash mcbsn, that way you can uh, make any purchase you want. For every sale, a portion of it will go directly to the esports program. So think of it this way, think of it as like making a, a contribution, making a gift, and you get a shirt. So it's kind of a win-win, you, you have a chance to support our esports program, and you get some, some cool stuff. I mean, I personally have already ordered some shirts and a hoodie. I don't even wear hoodies, but I got one anyway because it looks awesome. Uh, so please be sure to, to check that out. Um, all this uh, support definitely helps the esports program. Even just the fact that you are watching right now, we thank you so much for watching our, our Twitch channel, following here, following us on Twitch at Mer uh, Twitter at Marietta Esports or Facebook.com slash Marietta College Esports. All of that definitely helps us. Uh, and every little bit of support goes a long way. Now we are almost uh, into the game here. So as soon as the lobby loads and I get the UI set up, we will get into uh, game two. But yeah, as I was saying before, your support definitely is helping with making our program grow. We have gone from three teams in our first year to now eight teams. We have recently started up a Super Smash Brothers team and we, it looks like we're going to be able to put together a Call of Duty team. So we're going to see how that goes. So a lot of exciting things are happening with Marietta College Esports. All right, so let me get the UI up and running. It looks like everything here is good to go. So let's go ahead and get that to you. Just waiting for everyone to load. There we go. So, game two, Marietta College versus Ohio Northern University. Marietta is on the blue side, Ohio Northern is on the red side. Marietta needs to take this game if we want to go to a game three. Otherwise, Ohio Northern will take it. And we are seeing pings coming out by Ohio Northern. They're looking to do an invade right from the get-go. So, Marietta has to be careful. They're going to go straight for the bot lane. Cowboy has to be extremely careful here not to get... Uh, picked off. He's going to put a war down and back away. And they're going to spot the invade. And that should tell Cowboy to get out of there. He needs he needs to get out of there. And we're seeing that Moon's going to be able to at least get a war by uh, Ohio Northern's Raptors. And they may be sticking around trying to see if they can catch anyone. But Marietta will fall back. They do have at least some vision, so they know exactly where a higher northern is. So pretty good defensive play there by the Pioneers to prevent uh, any first bloods or anything uh, along those lines. And even getting a little bit of vision on their side. And in fact, it looks like uh, Marietta will start on their blue side just to see if we can wait a little bit for... Uh, those wards to disappear and Ohio Northern will start on their red side too and that's going to get spotted out by the wards. Although to be fair, Ohio Northern will know 
that Mary to start on blue side because with all those wards there, they, they, they're they not going to see Nox there. It's going to be like, where is he? Oh, he must be a blue buff. We already see Marietta looking to try to poke down uh, Aphelios already at about half health. And we're going to see Lee Sin going to try to get... And he does get the Q off. And Moon does flash away, but... Uh, yeah, all they're going to be able to get is the flash. And we're seeing Olaf is all... Lucas is already very low on health, so he's got to be careful. Uh, he is going to get spotted out with the ward that's still there. But Nox is going to have to be careful to make sure he does not get executed. His smite is down. And a Highland Northern actually punishes him. They knew he was there, so they went to, uh, to take him out. And now we're going to be looking for a gank onto Moon. The Q does land. But he will go under the tower to prevent a, another kill. See, Moon is poked down pretty hard by Victor, so it's making it very difficult for him to be able to CS. Already down by 11 CS, three, less than three and a half minutes into the game. Not too much else going on. Crestman is getting an early lead in the, the top lane, but we do know that Kled is going to get very powerful once he gets his attack speed up. Don't see too much going on. I mean, the, the big factor here we are seeing is in that mid lane. We're seeing Victor having a commanding lead over Moon right now. Just because Moon's going to get poked down pretty hard. There's not much he can do about it. So Victor was a very good counter uh, to the Diana. And we do see Lee Sin kind of moving down into the bot lane. Possibly looking for a potential gank attempt. And they are going to see the Lee Sin. And the Q is going to land onto Zyra. He does flash away, but it's not enough. And another kill will go to a higher Nolder. Now we see Clem trying to get onto the offensive. And just a little trading going on in, in the top lane. Not too much else going on. Victor's still working on poking out uh, Diana and has a 21 CS lead uh, over him. So that that's pretty much a, a free kill over over Moon. Now Ocean Drake is up, so Nox is going to try to see if Hanon is going for it. It's not happening just yet. But we do see Lee Sin coming down again, maybe looking to set up uh, another uh, gank attempt.
And he's gonna get, uh, he's gonna get, yeah, he just is able to get the jump on. Marietta was not prepared for it. And with that, the jungler is gonna get a, the double kill. Yeah, they, they need to know that if uh, Lee Sins did that before, he's going to do it again. They should have put a ward down, didn't happen, didn't respect it. And they get punished for it. So with that, Ohio Northern is ahead by 2,000 gold, just about seven and a half minutes into the game. And this is where Ohio Northern, once they take the lead, they will run with it. So giving them this kind of gold lead this early in the game... It's going to allow them to do a bunch of things. So they're going to take the Ocean Drake. But it's going to give them some options with how they can try to get some other kills. So Marion is going to have to play smart if they want to try to get back in this game. Otherwise, this could be a very quick game. And we are going to see the gank attempt onto Kled. And Nox will get the kill onto Quick Draw 76. So Marion is now on the board on kills. And we see that Aphelios is trying to... Uh, Run away, and actually Brimstone will get him down, but we do see Lee Sin coming in, and the Q does connect, and actually uses his ult to knock Cowboy away from the turret, and they're going to get the kill onto Cowboy. Brimstone's going to try to get Lee Sin down, but he's going to get extreme low in health, and Lee Sin does get the double kill onto him. So Marina does get a couple of kills, but Lee Sin's getting several back. He's already at 501 and already at 4100 gold, which is a commanding lead over anyone else on the Pioneer side. So we see the charge coming out by Kled trying to get onto Nox. And we already see him take a lot of damage and just gets the solo kill onto him. And that's going to allow Ohio Northern to go for the Rift Herald. At least I thought they were going to go for the Rift Herald. There they are. This does allow Brimstone and Cowboy to work on trying to at least get some turret plating to, to get some gold back. And it looks like with that Rift Herald pick, uh, they are going to go for a lane swap. And Lee Sin is actually trying to get a gank onto Marietta. And they may be looking for a three-person dive. And it looks like uh, Lee Sin will just kind of work on his drugs. Uh, So it looks like they're behind them. We'll do another lane swap. So they push the lane a little bit and they're going to swap back. So now Marianne is eyeing the... Well, Cloud Drake's not up for another minute 30. So I think they were just trying to get some vision set up. Now we see Diane trying to get onto Victor, but he is going to pop his ult, and that's going to make it very difficult for Moon. Although he's getting very low... Meanwhile, Braum does get the kill onto Brimstone, but Nox is there, 
for the shutdown. And we're actually seeing a uh, an engage going on a little bit in the mid lane. Crestman does use his ult, but uh, does not connect. And all the action is happening just away from the camera, trying to catch what's going on and just completely miss it. We see Moon's getting dangerously low, and he does end up falling at the very last second. I mean, that shield stun from uh, Victor is definitely causing issues for them. And we see Brimstone try to use his ult to finish off Victor, but it does not connect. So now we're starting to see High Northern converging. Uh, looks like they are going to converge to the mid lane to drop the Rift Herald to put some pressure there. Which is going to allow Ohio Northern to start on the uh, Cloud Drake. And Leeson's going to get, try to get the jump onto Nox. The Rift Herald does go down. And we see the grenades going out trying to catch someone. Q does connect. But I don't think Leeson's going to try to follow up with that. So Ohio Northern will start up on the Cloud Drake. And the Glen Charge does come out. And they're going to be looking for a jump onto Crestman. Crestman is taking some damage where he will get to his tower, but they may be looking to try to dive on top of it anyway, and they do get the kill. So we are at about 13 and a half minutes in, and Ohio Northern is up by 2,500 gold. So that's a pretty considerable lead. The Zyra ult does come out to catch with uh, Lee Sin, and Brimstone does get the kill onto Lee Sin. The Brimstone is going to need that. He's going to come back. Although, now Brom's going to pop his ult, and they're going to catch Brimstone and get the kill. So it's a one from one in the bot lane. And Nox was going to try to go for something. Actually, he's going to back away. See Moon trying to get onto a uh, quick draw, getting him very low. And Qu quick draw actually gets the kill onto Moon. That has to be frustrating considering how low he was. Now Crestman will be looking for the gauge onto Victor. Does flash, but then does get hit. But he gets the kill onto Crestman anyway by using his... Well, he doesn't use his ult, but Nox will get the kill. Actually, no, the ult did come out. But Nox was able to get the, the kill onto him, so it is a one for one. Uh, meanwhile, Ohio Northern was able to get the tower, and then Lee Sing uses his Q, is able to connect and finish off Nox. So it's a two for one plus tower in favor of Ohio Northern. Things are coming out. Lisa may be looking for a uh, a gank contempt from behind. It is going to flank. The grenade will stun and actually ends up falling. A nice ult there by Cowboy. Oops, sorry about that. All right, we are seeing some exchanges going on here in the, the bot lane. And we've seen the charge onto Crestman, and Lee Sin's gonna be there too. 
Oh, the Nox will pop his ult, and Lee Sin will try to get away, but Crestman's gonna have to back off, and he actually ends up going down with Victor Roaming, so that's a two for nothing in favor of Ohio Northern. Meanwhile, we're seeing a lot of damage going on in the bot lane. Uh, Brimstone is able to get a kill onto Aphelios. But Ohio Northern will secure the Rift Herald. So 17 minutes in the game, and Ohio Northern is already uh, have about a all about a 4,500 gold lead. So the gold lead is widening. It was like I was saying earlier. Once a high lord takes the lead, they will do everything they can to widen that lead. And Merit is trying to force plays, but they are so far behind now. See High Northern going for the dive onto Crestman. He will pop the all and does get onto Victor. But it's not enough to get the kill. Meanwhile, High Northern does secure the Infernal Drake, so they are up three dragons and they are working on building that lead even further. Meanwhile, Moon tries to get the kill on it and the mount comes up just in time. But they do get the shutdown onto Kled. And meanwhile, Hound Northern will continue to push in the bot lane. They do get Brimstone down and will get that bottom turret. So now they're up three turrets to zero. Marion is able to at least secure the top tower, so Moon was able to the split push and try to uh, get that tower there. Um, but we're almost 20 minutes into the game, and a high northern is still up by 5,000 gold. Marion is going to have to look for some picks if they want to come back from this. They cannot do 5v5s. They have to find uh, advantageous fights. And it looks like high northern may be looking for a, a fight themselves. The Q does land onto Brimstone. But he does back off. Great job using the the, uh, the grenades to, to prevent it. But now with the grenades down, Lee Sin will get the engage. Has to pop his uh, stopwatch. But Moon does get the kill onto him. Fled will teleport in. And a nice charge there by Cressman. But Moon will go down and so will Nox. So it's two down for Marietta. And Ohio Northern will work on getting uh, Brimstone down. And there's already three down for Marietta, possibly four. And actually, Cowboy does get the shutdown, but Christmas falls, so Cowboy's only what's left. And that is an ace for Ohio Northern. So they will get the inhibitor tower down and the inhibitor. I don't think they're going to be able to get anything just uh, yet. Or, or any of the Nexus towers, I should say. So with that ace, that does put Ohio Northern in a substantial lead. We are talking 
almost 7,000 gold, 21 and a half minutes into the game. This is that lead that we was warning about. Marina will work on trying to catch the Braum. Is under half health, but he does flash away. The charge comes out by Kled. Nox is having to pop his Ragnarok just to try to get away, but he's already extremely low in health. And Marina tries to do for something, but they're having to back away. Cowboy's already at half health. Nox is at very low on health. So Higher Northern may be looking for one more team fight, and if they win it, that may be enough to finish the game. But they will go back and go straight for Baron. Or at least try to bait it out. Not so sure which one yet. Marina has to know that Higher Northern's going for the Baron. Or they may be looking to try to catch. They may be looking to try to catch um, Victor, but it does not. Uh, Sorry, the Ornol does not connect. So they are trying to do some poke. And Cressman will get the engage onto Braum and Victor. The Braum ult does come out. Cressman's already under half health. But Moon is going to go down, but Brimstone gets to kill the Braum. So it's a one for one. Lee Sin does get in from behind, but Brimstone's going to fall. And so with Cressman. That's three down for Marietta. Cowboy goes down. All that's left is Nox. So he's going to try to retreat. Well, most of Ohio Northern will go straight for the Baron. Victor will continue to chase down Nox. And meanwhile, Super Minions are going into the uh, the Nexus Tower, so Nox is going to have to do something about it. And they... Will secure the Baron. So now Marietta is up, but we are looking at what appears to be a 10,000 gold difference. Infernal Drake is up, and Highland North is going to go straight for it. Marietta is not going to be able to contest it. Marianne does get spotted out, and High Northern will secure the uh, the Infernal Drake. And they'll just back away. Meanwhile, Marianne has to keep someone in the mid lane to take care of the Super Minions. Meanwhile, Moon was just up there by himself with no vision, just disrespecting a Highland Northern, and he gets punished for it. And that's going to give a Highland Northern the green light to continue their push. Cressman's having to fall back because Highland Northern is going to go straight for the win. And there's not much Mary is going to be able to do. Lee Sin does get the jump and kicks out Brimstone. Meanwhile, Braum does get the kill onto Nox, so the other Pioneer is already down. Lee Sin does get his kill uh, onto uh, Brimstone. So three for Maria is already down. And they get the kill on Cowboy, and Crespin is the only one that's left. One Nexus Tower has already fallen, and that's going to be an unofficial ace for Ohio Northern. Moon tries to uh, make a play, but he's going to go down, and that's going to be it. And with that, Ohio Northern will take the game 2-0. I mean, it was kind of what I was saying earlier. They, they took the early lead and they were able to snowball and win the game 25 minutes, 41 seconds. Uh, but yeah. So that will be it, uh, at least for our broadcast. Uh, Collegiate PUBG is going on, so we will be ending the stream very soon. And I believe it'll be set where we'll immediately host Collegiate PUBG, so you can watch our PUBG in action now. So please be sure to, to support them. As a reminder, tomorrow our Rainbow Six Team will be playing against uh, University of Texas Austin. That'll be 8.30 p.m., so please be sure to come back for that. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please be sure to follow us on Twitch and uh, Twitter and Facebook. So 
you're already at our Twitch channel, so please be sure to follow. Uh, on Twitter, you can follow us at Marietta Esports, uh, Facebook.com slash Marietta College Esports. You can also uh, follow our YouTube channel, bit.ly slash Marietta College Esports. Uh, so from all of us here, thank you for watching, and we hope you enjoy the, the rest of your evening. <laughs>